Welcome to another series of AL programming and today we are going to look at Azure functions. It will be a series of maybe one or two videos or maybe three videos and we'll try and see how we can be able to leverage Azure functions to be able to create functionality that is not um, easily created using L programming. Case an example is what if we need the ability for .NET interoperability in L using DLL. Maybe we have our custom functionality with the .NET DLLs and we'd like to use them with our um, Azure Fun okay, we'd like to use them with our S Business Central SaaS solution. So for that case, then Azure Functions will be ideal. So it is a platform as a service offering running on the Azure cloud computing service that is basically used for building, testing, deploying, and managing applications. And... Um, so when we want to run our small pieces of code and for in uh, the coding principle of functions, a function should have a single responsibility. So what is this single responsibility that we'd like to use that is really done well by a language such as C sharp, by a language such as Java or Python or PHP? What is it that is easily done on this other side and is rather complex when done in L programming? Then we can leverage Azure Functions, which is so cheap, basically. And if you look at, if you are using the pay-as-you-go subscription, consuming what you want, you have a, a grant, a free grant of over, okay, of one million executions. And you'll only pay for the extra million execution, $0.2. So that is basically almost a negligible amount uh, considering the availability and the power that you can be able to create. And the platform enables us to focus on just creating the function, not any other thing like where will I host it, the virtual environment, just the function. So when you log into your Azure, you, you can go and choose the function app. So the function app is the container for our functions where all our functions will be created. So we'll create a new function app. I don't know if that name is used. I want to say it is Yaleo. And um, maybe the default resource group. So it is available. So it will be for today. Then we choose our runtime stack. Let's choose .NET runtime stack and leave the other options as default. Then review and create it i don't know if it will have any errors and uh, let's create it and it is initializing um our deployment so so it's submitting the template for our resource group so that it can be able to be deployed and uh, so the function the function is uh being deployed will go to our resource and uh, be able to to view it so if you are using the payers you go subscription and under, under the subscription option you'll choose the relevant subscription there let's give it time to finish and um, we'll be able to to now um, run it but uh, when using Azure Functions, think of what they could add value to you, uh, for, for you. Uh, is it image processing? 
what is that uh, complex thing that is done better in python for instance maybe you'd like to use the turtle uh, python library or you'd like to use the py charm i don't know and many other data science related libraries of python what would you really love to to do and uh, then if if that is it then we can basically host it in azure and uh, raise an http request and be able to get that functionality rather than reinventing the wheel with AL programming, which will be even more tough. So our deployment is complete. We can go to our resource and uh, basically the most important thing is we can create a function. But before we create a function, we can go to our resource so that you can see whatever was created. And we can see that the function has a URL. So when you create a function, the function app, which is the container of, the, uh, of all the functions, so all our functions under this function app will have the URL that is the function app name dot azure websites dot net. And uh, for us to be able to add our DLLs maybe or our files for dot net interoperability, we'll just add for this case the function app name dot scm dot azure websites dot net. But I'll open this so to verify that our function is up and running. There we are, and it's telling us that Azure Functions is an event-based serverless compute experience to accelerate our development. And here, let's go back to our functions. And uh, we can create our functions. Let's use the Azure portal, which is um, best optimized for getting started without local setup and choosing from function templates. So let's create from here. So it will pop up on the right side and we'll have be, uh, some options to choose while creating our functions. So of course, we just want to develop in our portal. We have the option to either choose VS Code or any other code editor. But we have chosen to use the portal. So what we'd like to create is an HTTP trigger and this will be a function that will be run whenever it receives an HTTP request responding based on data in the body or query string. So that is what we'd like to create. We have several other options like the timer function, maybe send grid, um, SQL trigger, which you can all explore. And uh, with this, such a functionality, play around with it so that you can see the different options that are available for you to be able to to run our func your function so i'll stick um i'll call it a generic name this is the first function for us that we're creating yakwanza this is a swahili name and the authorization level i'll go with function and uh, what is it? So it controls whether the function requires an API key uh, and which key to use. So function uses a function key. Admin uses a master key. So function and master keys are found in the keys management panel in the portal. So when your function is selected um, for user-based authentication, go to function app settings. So we'd like to focus on using the function so that at least uh, if we use uh, the, uh, the anonymous, anybody with our URL will be able to access our function, which I don't think is so ideal. We'd rather just have a function and then it will have an API key that we can use it at least just to add that extra security level to avoid having it to be so open. Then we can create our function and basically test it to see what uh, it offers us. So there are several um, options here that it shows us whatever is happening in our function. But let's get our function URL. There's this 
our ability to get our function URL and be able to use maybe Postman to test it. So let me go here and run a get request. I think it should be a post request. So a get or post request, but there is no body. So let me just uh, change it to a post request. So there is a response here that this um, HTTP triggered function executed successfully. Pass a name in the query string or in the request body for the for a personalized response. So if I'm to say name is Mzangi, let us see what it does. So the name, when I pass a name in the query string, it says, hello Msangi, this HTTP function executed successfully. So I can either pass it here in the query string directly by adding these. And uh, this is our key, the code that has been passed in our query string for our function, just to enable us without, so meaning without this code, this function won't be able to run. It will not have a result. But with our key back or our API key, then we are able to run our function. So going back to the function, so if we try to code and test it, what is available here in terms of what the function is conta uh, contain, what it contains? So the environment is loading. So um, initially, the um, Okay, it's connecting to application insights. So this is our function. Um, so there is an I logger that will log information to the Azure application insights to um, just have that telemetry information to to have. Um, some knowledge on how our, of how our function is running or how it has been uh, running. So like this, it will log information that the C sharp HTTP trigger processed a request. So whenever a request is processed, then it will log that. And uh, we can be able to analyze to see how long it took, how long it uh, the logging of the request uh, took and all that. And then we go and do query our query string for the name. And um, so if we get the name, uh, that if the name has a value, we return a different response. So, okay, here we are. So if the, the name has a value, we say that this HTTP trigger function executed successfully, pass a name in the query string, or this, it's when we don't have a value, but when we have a value, uh, so the response message will be based on the string name. If Is it null or empty? So if the string is empty, then we say this. If it is not empty, then we display with hello the name, and then the function has been triggered successfully. So this is making an HTTP request. We have done it from Postman. And when we do it here, then we can be able to deserialize our object and get the name and be able to display our function. So this is the simplistic, simplistic way of creating our function. This is very simple, but of course it can complain, co co uh, it can contain more and more complex functionality. Play around with it, create your function. Um, I'll share a link to Microsoft Learn so that you can explore more Azure functions and see what they can be able to do. Things like timer triggers, which can, if you'd like to run code periodically, maybe every day in the morning or every month, uh, maybe you'd like to fetch information from a database and send emails to customers or send unique um, messages or SMS messages to your clients and uh, uh, you just need to do that particular function and really well without having to focus on where to host it and all that, then this is for us. This Azure function 
is our the platform that we can leverage on. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in video two of Azure Functions where we'll try at least to use Business Central a, a little bit and uh, do an HTTP request there and be able to access our Azure Function. So see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.